beautiful space to just bring ourselves, bring our heads and our hearts into the presence of our God. So I invite you to take a few quiet, deep breaths and prepare yourself, prepare your head, prepare your heart for this amazing celebration of 130 years of Assumption College in Kilmore. Thank you for that. Now, just before we start, can everyone make sure your phone is switched right off, no notifications, put it in aeroplane mode. Make sure we're not gonna get any interruptions or buzzing or you getting distracted by knowing it's there. So phone's completely off. And also, you are allowed and even encouraged to take your blazer off to make sure that you don't get too uncomfortable during mass and can just be present to what's happening.
Cathedral and the celebration of Assumption College's 130th anniversary mass. As we gather in this sacred place on this sacred ground, we take a moment to pause in quiet and place ourselves in the prayerful, in the prayerful presence of our God. We acknowledge that we gather on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, a place where they lived, loved, celebrated their rituals and sang their songs. We pay our respects to them and also acknowledge the presence of all our Indigenous brothers and sisters who gather with us today. May this celebration today, its prayers, its rituals and its songs move and inspire you to seek the things that are above. We welcome and thank Bishop Terry Curtin for being with us today to lead us in this Mass and I invite you all to stand and join in singing our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. It's my great privilege as Auxiliary Bishop of Melbourne, indeed, and responsible for the northern region of the Archdiocese to be here with you this morning to celebrate 130 years of Assumption College Kilmore. We give thanks to God for all that has been given to us in those years, and especially now asking his blessing upon us as we go forward strengthened by all that has happened over the years. We don't always respond to God's love, so again we pause and we ask mercy and pardon. You were sent to heal a contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, you have willed that your church be the sacrament of salvation for all nations, so that Christ's saving work may continue to the end of the ages. Stir up, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and grant that they may feel a more urgent call to work for the salvation of every creature, so that from all the people on earth, one family and one people of your own may arise and increase. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the letter of St. Paul's to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must seek the things that are above, where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth, because you have died, and now that life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed, and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory with him.
praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Go and teach all people my gospel. I am with you always until the end of the world. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ King of Christ. endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples set out for Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had arranged to meet them. When they saw him, they fell down before him, though some hesitated. Jesus came up and spoke to them. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teach them to observe all the commands I gave you. And know that I am with you always, yes, to the end of time. The Gospel of the Lord. We gather in this beautiful cathedral to celebrate 130 years of Assumption College Kilmore. From a humble start in 1893, when the Morris brothers first accepted the invitation to establish a primary school for local boys. What followed was its extension into a boarding school in, 18, in 1901 its registration as Assumption College in 1907, the enrolment of girls as well beginning in 1971, and now a thriving college serving both day students and boarders, might I add a college with a great reputation and not just for AFL football players. 130 years, by my calculations, that's close to six generations educated in the ways of faith and life, guided by the charism of the Maris brothers. It's captured in the college motto, to seek the things that are above. We find these words in our first reading today, which we join with those of Jesus in our gospel, who says, know that I am with you always, even to the end of time. That promise to be present, to be with us, lies at the heart of our celebration of these 130 years, sustaining and enabling in the inevitable challenges and ever calling us forward. The college's mission vision statement points to what this means. So that compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, forgiveness, love, peace and gratitude are our lived experience. The first word used is compassion. Compassion, as I understand, is something divine in human beings that enables us to share deeply in the sufferings and needs of others and brings us to move from one world to the other, from the world of the helper to that of the one needing help. 
As Martin Luther King, the American civil rights campaigner, once put it, it's when the question changes from what will happen to me if I stop to help to what will happen to them, the wounded, if I don't. Here is where I note that other comment in our gospel passage. When some of the disciples saw him, they felt, when the disciples saw him, they fell to their knees, though some hesitated. Something more was to be asked of them, and were they ready for that? I'm sure we all want to love others. I've got a few dots after that. But sometimes this is an area of life where we can easily deceive ourselves, where self-seeking can enter in instead. This is something recognised in common usage where charity, a word used for love of neighbour, is not always a positive word and where do-gooders can be more of a burden than a help. Whatever we do in life, love of neighbour must be spelt out in the tiny things of daily life or else it means nothing. If we pay attention, each day presents us with countless choices for selfishness or devotion to others, for self-interest and self-protection, or the promotion or the well-being of others. Here, the little things have everything to do with love and are most likely to be lived, be lived free of self-deception. The American Cistercian monk Thomas Merton put it this way, Good lives are those that combine simplicity and wholeness and are lived in love. Genuine love of neighbour cannot be unthinking. We cannot just follow the kind, natural instincts of our hearts without examination. We must try to discern with prayer, with thoughtful reflection, what is good for the other, be it the helping hand or indeed the refusal be it encouragement or rebuke. It's not easy to feel good when one has chosen to be hard, when we have said no and maybe received a few harsh words in return. Positive acts, however, kind words, helping hands, meek responses, leave a glow behind. Here it could be we may well be building a nice self-image, but it's not necessarily a loving one. It does happen that good people can unconsciously think they have to keep their hands clean and always do the right thing. But this may be a real block to genuine love of neighbour and openness to God. If you really get involved with others, most times the last thing we'll feel is that we are good. Look at Jesus in the Gospels meeting others, it's not all plain sailing. They often appear hostile, crafty, sly, self-seeking, blind. Even his disciples come across at times as obtuse, fickle, and indeed glory seekers. The Gospels do not hide his moments of anger, exasperation, and sense of futility in what he was trying to do. He shared our lot, but in the midst of all his human struggles never wavered in obedience to his Father's will. So we, in turn, keep our eyes fixed on him and, coming closer, forget ourselves and cease to bother with our own self-image while our own I or me dominates our lives, as it naturally does, we will use others, demanding that they be as we want them to be. Only exposure to Jesus will show us this and then with pain we see our selfishness and yearn for purification. Little power struggles test all this, small things where someone else knows better and we dig our heels in. Here enters the role of prayer in those quiet moments where we deliberately put aside everything else and give it time to simply remain exposed to God's love. God who knows we are creatures in the making, who only grow step by step into truth and love, who all the time bends towards us in love, offering light and strength. A special way Catholics do this is at Mass, that moment when we join our yes to Jesus, who is himself the great yes, the great Amen, 
to God's plan of love. We do what we can, we bring offerings which represent our very selves. We carry out the right that Jesus gave us, but it is to God's love that we look for the transformation of the offering of ourselves into the perfect offering of Jesus, that we might truly be the body of Christ. We come that we might be taken up in him, that we too might be for others as he was and is for us. That's the story of the Maris brothers who founded this college, of those who have taught, played at and studied at and given generously of themselves to the work and mission of Assumption College over the past 130 years. Strengthened by the promise of Jesus to be with us and continue to seek the things that are above, may that be our story too. as we come to our prayers of intercession. Dear brothers and sisters, gathered in faith and celebrating the dignity and joy of learning and work, we place before God our Father all our needs. For our church leaders, Pope Francis, Archbishop Peter, all bishops and priests of the Archdiocese of Melbourne, may they inspire us to live out the gospel message with conviction and generosity of heart. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may they respond to the needs of the community with justice and mercy, giving selflessly to create a peaceful and compassionate world. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the generations of men and women who have contributed to the foundation and growth of Assumption College, especially the Maris Brothers and members of the Marist Association. May we draw upon their spirit of faith, hope and compassion in our efforts of building this faith community. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For each other as we pursue excellence in education and wisdom in life, may we all work together to build a community where all are treated with dignity and respect. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the homeless, and the disadvantaged in our midst, may we respond with generosity and compassion to those in need of our help. And to those who come to us seeking education and support, Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For deceased members of our community who have been called to eternal life, may your loving light shine upon them and grant them eternal rest and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Father, you are the source of all life and goodness. Hear our prayers and respond to our needs through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. of wind, depth of the sea, stability of earth, firmness of rock. I arise today to God's strength to pilot God's eye to look before me, 
God's wisdom to guide me, God's way to lie before me, God's will to protect me. From all who shall wish me ill, afar and anear, alone and in a multitude. and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the offerings and prayers of your church, O Lord, rise up in the sight of your majesty and gain acceptance, just as the glorious passion of your Son was pleasing to you for the salvation of the whole world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy... now for the Eucharistic prayer. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, St. Marcel in Champagne, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, Bishop Terry, and the Order of Bishops, and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. you now to kneel for communion. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. and reverent way you've um, entered into this ceremony so far. For the distribution of communion, just a reminder that if you haven't received your first communion, if you simply come forward to one of the ministers and cross your hands on your chest and either the priest, the bishop or the minister will give you a blessing. We would ask everyone to move towards communion and, and, and to come forward. If you're sitting on the sides, if you come along the wall and return via the pillars, 
if you're in the centre of the, the nave, if you come down the middle aisle and also return by the pillars. And if you're on the side, you come down the middle aisle and return by the side. If you do require a gluten-free option host, uh, that will be served over near the choir.
Toribus Ora Ora Pro nobis Ora Ora Pro nobis Peccatoribus Non che Mortis nostre in ora mortis nostre non che in ora mortis nostre in ora mortis nostre.
Let us stand and pray. May our participation in your table sanctify us, O Lord, we pray, and grant that through the sacrament of your church all nations may re receive in rejoicing the salvation accomplished on the cross by your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now. You're going to have a few words from Kate Fogarty, our principal. Good morning, Assumption College students and teachers and friends of the college and to everybody watching along at home, hello to you as well. Um, what a special gift for us to be able to gather on our 130th birthday in this space. Students and staff of Assumption College have been coming here to St Patrick's Cathedral for 130 years to celebrate our big events. And so you are now part of that history and the legacy that we pass on to everybody who comes after us. I'd like to say a special thank you to Bishop Terry for celebrating Mass for us today. It's fabulous to have you with us and also to Father Prakash from our local parish who was um, helping out with our Mass today too. We have some special guests with us. Um, thank you to them for their presence with us. We've got Brother Tony Clark representing the Marist Brothers. We've got Darren McGregor from Marist Schools Australia, Philip and Helen Clancy and Greg Bacuna from our Advisory Council. And I think there's some other people who snuck in up the back too. But we are very grateful that you could come and celebrate today with us. An extra special and remarkable thank you to our choir and musicians for the beautiful way you have led us today. We had a few microphone problems, unfortunately, there at the start, and Lizzie in particular, we didn't get to hear your beautiful solo, but we know you, do, you did a marvellous job. Those at the front got to hear it, so we enjoyed it, thank you. But to the rest of you, and those, those beautiful new hymns that you have learnt for us to celebrate with, just what a talented group of young people you are, and thank you for your service to our school. We've also got a couple of students back here on the altar behind me who've been helping out, and a number of people who you've seen our student leaders helping us make sure that today has run smoothly. We've got an exciting lunch to celebrate. Just to let you know, we did have some extra lunches that we ordered today, and those that we know, now that we know how many of you are here, that we don't need, we have donated through Brother Doug Walsh, a very famous Morris brother and dear Morris brother to our school. That food has gone to the Vinnie Soup Van for tonight, so it will be used to help feed the, the most in need. So nothing will go to waste from today. Now, Bishop Terry, you're in for a treat because we're closing in our recessional hymn with the Subtum, which isn't our official school song, but it's certainly one we love to sing. So we're going to sing it nice and loud for you. But thank you, everyone, and happy 130th birthday, Assumption College. Thanks. Thank you, Kate, and I'd like to echo your words too and thank everyone who's helped us to come to this celebration. In a particular way, I want to acknowledge Brother Tony Clark, who's here, whom I taught many, many years ago. And I'm delighted to see you back in Australia, Tony. You have so much to share and to give, and we look forward to that. We might now stand for the final blessing. I need the crows here. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
I'd invite you all to, to be seated. Um, if there are any staff or those staff that are assisting us get down